Echinacea purpurea, or more commonly known as the purple coneflower. That's what we're talking about today on Hillside Gardening. So let's go ahead and get started. So first and foremost, coneflowers are beautiful. They attract tons and tons of pollinators, just as you can witness this bumblebee right here, hanging out, doing its best things here. But uh, other than that, they are deer proof. That is one reason why I love these echinacea or just like I said, the common coneflower. Okay, so not only deer resistant, they are super beneficial for pollinators. They come in different shades of light purple to dark purple to even red. Uh, they make a wonderful border in a mixed planting, especially with dahlias like I have in the background. I'm gonna show you another image here of my other property where I have uh, my wildlife plots. Let me show you that right now. Okay, so mentioned these are perennials. They go as far as zone three or four in some cases, but I'm here in zone six B, seven A. Uh, so they they overwinter just fine for me. They are a tough plant. Now, what things like these leaves right here, guys? These are really jagged and kind of rough and sharp, which is reason why deer won't eat them because it's not you know comfortable for their very very sensitive and soft little tongues, which is a benefit for us, right? So it keeps the deer away, keeps uh, the pollinators happy. Can't be more happy about that but anyways these guys will get about three feet tall about two and a half feet tall and they enjoy a full sun environment guys so these need a full sun they will not do well in the shade whatsoever they will not grow they'll get very spindly top heavy and kind of fall over quite honestly in my experience they can go long periods without um, water but they're not a um, true like desert plant or anything like that native to the american prairies uh, they are you know withstand a long period of drought and high temperatures it's been in the 90s lately guys and these guys these flowers have just not even budged they are doing fantastic and they are putting on tons and tons and tons and tons of beautiful growth just look at that so let me go ahead and show you another spot of my garden where i have some more cone flowers growing and talk about those now this section of the garden gets a little bit less Sunlight's a little bit more of a filtered sunlight with these uh, giant trees and uh, flowering shrubs behind me, kind of shading this area a little bit. So I can kind of back up and show you a little bit more. So as you can see, it's in between these trees here and the fence in the garden over here, but it does get a good amount of sunlight. But what I've noticed is that when it does not grow in the fullest of suns, it will actually kind of get uh, a little scrawny. Like looks how it just kind of falls apart like this, guys. It's kind of breaking apart. So that is uh, one of the drawbacks about growing in a semi-shade area, or it could be just this one, but I think that's uh, pretty typical. As you can kind of tell, they're actually laying down right here, not doing the best, but they're still beautiful and still providing tons and tons of nectar for the beneficial pollinators in the garden. So let's go ahead and go for a little bit more of a walk here. Let me go ahead and take you with me. So you can kind of see some of those beautiful sunflowers and other things in the background. Now then this backyard here, we have a full, uh, sun it's doing quite well so walk past the dahlias here let's go back to some more cone flowers now these guys right here now these i started just i think there was one little plant i planted years ago and it has actually spread okay so it has spread it made a little colony so that's something else we'll talk about they will self sow okay they will self seed themselves so if you want to in the springtime it's no different no difficulty at all just to go through and kind of just pick up the little seedlings trying to transplant them or just let them stay as they are and they'll just continue multiplying and growing and filling in this nice little area now this spot here had a, a little flower in it that eventually died it was a little bit of uh, pushing the zone if you will so it didn't make it but uh my neighbor actually gave me this this is a, a wild berry or the pow pow i guess that's probably a trademark name probably going to get sued but that's fine um so hopefully that'll grow and that was kind of like a little clearance plant she found and she gave it to me because she know how knows how much i like cone flowers but there you go so hopefully that will fill in this little gap but yeah these guys are great they're great for a border they're great for a, a, kind of a screening so if you have a fence or something you want to kind of uh screen out a little bit why not plant some cone flowers now they do come in yellows and whites which are a little bit more difficult to find the whites are being a little bit more uh easily found and um yellows is actually pretty rare at least for me i've only seen it once and i'm not even sure it was a cone flower that just might have been what they're calling it but who knows 
who knows anyways these guys are beautiful one of my absolute favorites guys give cone flowers a chance in your garden you will not be disappointed if you'd like to see a video on how to start these beautiful plants from seed let me know drop a comment down below and i'll show you the whole procedure from collecting the seeds in the fall all along the stratification process and sowing them again in the spring so hopefully you guys like this quick little tip and quick little tutorial about growing your very own echinacea or purple coneflowers. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, bye-bye.